There are a few creeps on comment boards posting a bunch of rape myths, like he was dressed like he was asking for it, or once they're raped, they're all hookers anyways. And to them I say, save that shit for the rape trials. The rapist is dead. I'm supposed to be innocent unless proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. So if there's a reasonable doubt that I defended myself against a sexual assault, I should be exonerated. I shouldn't have to prove anything, least of all the creeps like that. They refused to move the trial to a different county, and the judge at the trial was obviously friends with the other judges in that county. Now, he wasted no time banning video cameras at trial, so few noticed in jury selection when he excluded all jurors who had been or who had family who had been sexually assaulted, but he refused to exclude any jurors who had been accused of or had family accused of sexual assault. Does that sound fair to you? The prosecutor accused me of ambushing the rapist, knocking him down, and stomping him out for no reason at all. The biggest problem with that is when you knock someone down, they fall in the direction you knock them. When you hit something, it moves backwards. He was on the carpet facing away from a small bedside cabin I can't possibly fit in, and his injuries were to the front. No furniture was knocked around, but he must have been knocked backwards repeatedly towards the ceiling. During trial, my public defender refused to object to the prosecutor doing serious things, like pointing to the wrong part of a chest x-ray with a laser pointer, thereby fooling the jury about the location of the injuries. There's a big difference between a kick to the side and a kick to the sternum. A kick to the sternum means I was kicking up from underneath. Could you see how the location of the kick could make a big difference in the verdict? I really started to question whether my public defender was really on my side when he abruptly told me at the last minute that my supposed crime scene expert was actually a handwriting expert. But I had serious doubts after the so-called expert started bragging to the half-black jury that he had proudly defended three Ku Klux Klansmen who dragged a black man to death behind a pickup truck. You can imagine their reactions as he sneered and swaggered at them from the witness stand. The public defender left no doubt he was against me during closing arguments. I'm going to read his exact words from the actual transcript using his exact delivery. Now I'm going to go over some of the stuff that the state's going to say, well, the show's my client is full of crap. He did this intentionally. He purposely ran out of the house. He hid his appearance. They're going to say that he cut his hair, but the transcript doesn't show that. No wonder they banned cameras at trial.